Are you? Apparently, apparently there's a yeah. lot of experts there that know more about self-driving cars than Elon Musk and the, <laughs> the Tesla. The Tesla. Apparently, the, apparently the, there's this guy named Dan O'Dowd who knows more about self-driving oh, he's cars so smart. than the Tesla autopilot. He's so team. smart, Warren. <laughs> you, 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 we just don't realize how smart these people are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, what um, Cummings knows more about it than than they do, and Gordon Johnson knows more about it than they do. There's just all these people who, you know, and it's so comical. I don't know. Do you have FSD beta? I do, I do. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I drive it every day. I, pretty much every day, I drive it. Yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's not perfect. Yeah, I think I think the thing that gets missed there all the time is that is is the only way in my opinion the only way to get this right is that you need a way to to gather as much data as humanly possible and once you hit a certain threshold the the improvement becomes exponential because that's just a function of data and that's how it works oh good. to make that self-driving work correct Correct. Yeah. So you have to have an army of cars out there with testers out there to give you the data that you need versus a fleet of a thousand cars that are going to be driving the same route over and over again. It's a non-scalable solution, right? And I think that's where these folks are just, I don't know, they choose to ignore the fact that this is the only way to do it correctly, or maybe they have um, bad intentions, potentially, that they're trying to harm the company the, for their own you know, the, gains. The conversations I have just crack me up. Like, tell me about people him. will say, oh, <laughs> he's, he, you know, Elon can't do that or Tesla can't do that or it can't be done. I'm like, have you seen the orbital rocket boosters landing? Do you right. know that people said you couldn't do that, that you couldn't make that work? Well, no, we never said you couldn't do it. Well, you said you couldn't do it economically, right? The, almost everyone agreed that you couldn't make that work from an economic standpoint. Right. And SpaceX has demonstrated not only can we do the most that's what i'm saying when when that happened this december 21 2015 and they launched a rocket into the sky accelerated to i forget how many times the speed of sound turned it around brought it back and landed it in basically the same spot yeah and what did somebody say it was like throwing a pencil over the entire empire state building and having it land on the eraser on the other side yeah yeah <laughs> And it, it really is pretty much like that. Yeah. And, you, and like now you're telling me, tell me again, there's something they can't do. So, tell, so, tell, yeah. Why, why do you think, so why do you think folks think like that? Like if, if we're going to like study the psychology of it. So why, why do you think there is a percentage of the population that's having such a tough time? And again, you know, I, I want to oh, come, okay. no, I'm going to be, a, yeah. I have a very clear answer to that. Okay. The average person doesn't put a lot of thought into it. Mm. There are a dedicated group of people who are being paid to spread FUD. Whether it's from the oil industry, the car industry, political figures, whatever, there is an army of people. I mean, I'm talking, there, there, there's tens or probably hundreds of people who are being paid to spread lies, to mm. spread confusion. And there are, now the, anybody who drives a Tesla gets it. Anybody, you know, the vast majority of people who invest in Tesla, who participate in the Tesla community, they get it. The vast majority of people in general aren't paying attention, but there's a body of people who watch NBC News and CNN and Fox News, and they read the Wall Street Journal, they read the New York Times, and they wrongly think they can trust these publications to tell them the truth or tell them something close to the truth. Yeah. And, and no matter how many times, you, I'll say this bluntly, no matter how many times you show people how much our government and our media have lied to us. They just want to believe what they're told. So there's a, there's a subset of the population that's substantial. That's like, well, if, if Brian Williams says this or, you know, wh whichever media figure they, they trust says this, then they just tend to believe it. And, you know, my, my favorite example of government lying to us is the Vietnam War. For 20 years, four presidents, their cabinets, the, the generals, everyone lied to the American people at the Vietnam War. They killed 3 million innocent Asians. Um, they killed, I don't know, tens of thousands of American soldiers. They did, you know, spent, I don't know, ten, hundreds of billions, a trillion dollars. I forget how much they spent on the Vietnam War. They lied to us about Afghanistan. That, but you, you point this out to people and they're like, it's, it's almost like it's a, they have a blind spot. They are so, because we've had from childhood, we've been bombarded with propaganda from through the school systems, everything telling us, trust the government, trust the experts, trust the science, blah, 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 blah. And it's very hard to get people to take the red pill, the, ma the matrix version of the red pill, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, 
maybe all this stuff you've been told, and I don't know if you've had your matrix moment or you just never bought it from the beginning. I, I don't remember when my matrix moment was, but you know, at a certain point I started to say, wait a minute. And then I started to say, wait a minute more. You start peeling off layers of the onion and pretty soon you start to realize they don't tell us the truth about anything. Yeah. If they, if they tell us the truth, it's an accident. 